Natalia had been young once. She made a really pretty bride. She was a loving wife and a devoted mother. And everything was fine. She, her husband Petro used to go off to work in the woods and she would spin wool and then she would weave the wool that she'd spun and then she would use the cloth that she'd woven and she'd make garments that people would buy or blankets or coats depending on how thick the fleece was. And life was okay. But it was a lot of years now since Petra, Petra had died. They'd had just one son and she'd really, really loved looking after him and bringing him up and he'd married and given her three beautiful grandchildren but two or three years ago now the fever had taken both him and his wife and left her with the three grandchildren. She didn't mind but it did mean she had to work that little bit harder to, to feed the four of them and and school books and shoes and, and slowly things like her dowry that she put away and all the beautiful crisp white linen and that had to get sold and, and the spare bits of furniture had to go and things started to get really quite difficult. But the children were fantastic and they helped around the house and Alina, the eldest girl, loved to help clean and sweep up and she had her broom with the branches on the end, the switch as we call them, and she swept away from the floor. Oh, spiders, oh, get out! No, 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 child. Leave the spider be. We all come in different shapes and sizes. There isn't a creature in this world that isn't different but we all need looking after. Look at the back. Look, see how she's all swollen up? She's full of eggs. She needs a place for her little spiderlings to hatch. When they have, and they've all gone their separate ways, then you can clean the corner. And that's the sort of person that Natalia was. She was a sort of glass half full kind of person, you know? She always had an ear, no matter who needed to bend it. And she had those sorts of hooks that would envelop you and you don't want them to stop. You know? And everybody loved her. But as time went on, she got older. And things got more difficult. And her eyesight started to go and she couldn't make the clothes that she made. And her arthritic fingers meant that she couldn't do the loom as she'd done before. And more and more things started to disappear from the cottage. And it was coming up to Christmas. There was no money for celebrations. And there was definitely no money for presents or decorations. This was going to be a really, truly drab, sad Christmas. The two children had gone out into the woods and they managed to find a little tree. Because nobody else wanted it. And they brought that into the house. And the smell of oh, pine just emanated through the room. It was lovely, but <coughs> very bare. The only colour in the room was the fireplace. And even the fire was getting smaller and smaller these days. Christmas Eve came. And Natalia and the three children went and they all got into the one bed and cuddled themselves up into the one blanket that they'd got left to try and keep warm, just to make it through another night. Whilst in bed, the spider came out from its corner and thought, maybe I could do something for this lady who's always been so kind to us. Maybe. Yeah, maybe I could decorate the tree. And she set to. And she spun spirals. And she spun geometric shapes. And they went along this branch. And they moved to that branch. And they went higher and higher and higher. And a beautiful silk just hung in the air. 
When she finished, she climbed back down the trunk and away to her corner. In the middle of the night, the fire went out. Outside, the moon was bright and the air was crisp and cold, and the frost spread its fingers across the land and under the door, along the floor, till it reached the trunk. Ross spread up the trunk along the branches and added crystals of frost to every single silken loop around the tree. As the sun rose, so did Natalia. She came out from the room and she, the sun came through the window and the tree with the frosty crystals. And as the sun started to warm the air in the house, they started to sway mm -hmm. and glisten. And little bits of light flashed. She quickly went and got the children because she knew that this wouldn't last for long. The sun would warm the frost and then it would be gone. So she pulled the children out to look at this spectacle. And sure enough, the room got warmer and the sun began to melt the frost. But people say that Christmas is a magical time and that anything's possible at Christmas. And this story has a little bit of magic in it too. For as the sun started to melt the frost, Instead of leaving spider silk, there was spun gold and silver upon the tree. In fact, so much gold and silver that Natalia and her children never ever were hungry again. And Natalia being Natalia, she spread what she could around her friends too. I just wonder, do you have a small dark corner for a spider? <laughs>